Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Chris and in today's video, we'll be upgrading the factory flat fork connector on my R50 Pathfinder to a seven blade connector for towing. Now my truck came from Nissan factory with the uh, flat fork connector that you see there. And um, what I'm gonna do now is slightly upgrade things to a seven blade connector minus the uh, reverse feature because our trailer doesn't have reverse lights. Um, however, I'm not doing a full on install. So we're not gonna do a full on trailer brake controller install today, guys. Instead, what we're opting to do is utilize a Bluetooth wireless brake controller that's driven by an application that you can install on your cellular device. And now uh, this uh, particular brake controller is made by uh, Kurt. And this is just a cheaper way for you to control the brakes on your trailer. Okay, so here we have a um, few items that we're going to be utilizing for today's uh, project. So here's the connector that I was just telling you guys about. Again, this is the seven blade, the uh, contact point in the center. That's the uh, reverse feature. Um, now for this particular item, I'm going to cheat a little bit. This is going to plug into the factory flat four connector that's on my truck. And then I'm only going to be utilizing two additional wires. So this guy's our ground. We'll ground that to the body of the truck. And then this black wire right here, which is going to be our 12 volt connection. This blue one is what you would use to get the uh, signal from your brake control if you had a physical one in your truck or SUV. And then the yellow wire, that's our reverse feature, which we're not gonna utilize. Um, in addition to this, uh, this kit did come with this bracket, installation hardware. Now I've also gone to uh, AutoZone and uh, O'Reilly's to get some additional items. So I got these self-tapping screws from uh, AutoZone. I'm hoping to use this to attach this to the bottom of my uh, bumper. And then here's our 30 amp fuse. Uh, picked this guy up at uh, O'Reilly's and um, also got few spools of uh, wire and then some uh, connectors here this is what we'll be utilizing to connect the 30 amp inline fuse to our battery and then we have these guys here um, assorted butt connectors for any additional connections that I'll need to make which in this case because I have two spools of our uh, wire you should do just fine. All right, so now we have our bracket in. Um, what I've done is use those self-tapping screws. Let's go ahead and uh, punch through my bumper there, as you can see. Now I'm gonna take the four nuts and screws that were supplied with this pigtail and harness to secure it to the bracket. And uh, that'll be done from the back here. You see these holes that are pre-drilled and uh, we'll get that attached and secured. I did have to wallow out the holes on the top side of the bracket that attaches to the actual bumper of the vehicle to accommodate these uh, self-tapping screws. But again, not a big deal at all. All right, guys, so now we have the adapter securely fastened to the uh, supplied uh, metal bracket there. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is ground the uh, harness to the frame of the truck. Planned on utilizing this hole right here. Um, this is on the uh, bumper, the metal bumper that's under your plastic bumper. This too is also connected to the frame of the truck. Um, it's also closest as the wire loom that was provided isn't very long. So, what I plan on doing is having this guy go right on top 
So on the top of the frame, but in line with this hole. Now I'm gonna clean that area up. I'm gonna hit it with a uh, really abrasive piece of sandpaper top and bottom. So I'm gonna expose as much uh, metal as possible to make sure we have a firm and good connection. All right, guys, so now we have our connection made for our ground. Go ahead and just put them right there. This is just a simple nut and bolt, nothing fancy. I just found some spare parts that I had laying around that just fit that hole. Um, here's the connector, of course. Now the next wire we're gonna be working on is this guy right here. This is gonna be our 12 volt auxiliary power. Um, again, this is usually the signal wire for your brake controller. If you have a physical one, we're not using this. And then this is for reverse, which we're also not gonna utilize. So these guys, I'll be tying them up and getting them out the way. Um, come around this way. See here we have the connector plugged in for the flat four connection. This goes into the factory flat four and feeds back to this guy here. All right, guys, so getting a little bit further into the meats here, taking out the um, under trunk storage and the trunk floor, we've taken that out along with the uh, threshold plastic here for the trunk layer. We've taken that guy out as well. See, both here. Now the reason why we took them out is because I wanted to make this install as factory as possible and more importantly to protect my wire that I'm gonna be running. So my 12 volt power supply, what I plan on doing is routing it through the uh, paneling here. Now this panel, it comes right out. You just pop it out and it comes out this way, all the way down along the door. So we got our wire um, ran through this grommet here in the uh, floor of the trunk. I had to remove this. There's some conduit on the other side. And um, now I'm gonna remove this uh, plastic paneling and start working our 12 volt wire towards the front of the truck. Now underneath, what we got going on, we got to lower the spare a little bit. What I've done is just simply use the conduit to route my red wire. Sadly, it's going to be exposed in this area and then into some more conduit and then out the conduit here and then into our signal wire. So I've left myself just a little bit of wiggle room here in terms of length and I will get all of this buttoned up and uh, we'll start working our way towards the front. Next, we're gonna start uh, crimping some wires together. I'm gonna have to crimp my hot wire here into this guy, the black wire. And um, we're also gonna go ahead and put some heat shrink tubing over this area as well, just to keep things nice and dry. And then I'm gonna come along the interior I'm gonna come down this way and just continue to work my way towards the front of the truck. Initially, I wanted to run it under the truck, but then I realized that there's nowhere for me to like zip tie the wire to. And it's not exactly ideal if you wanna keep the wire protected. So I'm gonna route everything here under the uh, threshold. And what I found is that right behind this guy, You see this cable right here. This is, let me see. Actually, no, sorry. So if you see right here, this cable right here, that's our hood release cable. That runs through the fender well. So I'm gonna go through the fender well and then up into the uh, engine bay. And I'll show you guys here in a moment what it would look like when I start uh, routing things. It'll all make sense here in a minute. Okay, so we have our crimp connection made. We have our heat shrink tubing um, here in a little while. Once I verify everything works, I'll go ahead and get that melted. For right now, it's just gonna stay the way that it is. Um, you've already put the uh, trunk back together. I'll show you guys. 
trunk space is all back together. I'm gonna be ran out wire up through here towards the front. Down through here, through here, and passing through here. And now currently we're in the front. Um, what I've done is taken the wire and I've pushed it under the carpeting somewhat. And it's gonna continue its way this way and then through the firewall. Yeah, I was in such a rush and so excited about finally getting to a place of completion that I actually started to put things back together. I just paused here to show you guys what I've done. So that rubber boot right there, that's um, attached to the hood release cable. You see my red power wire coming through a hole that I've made at the top of that um, rubber grommet. Then it's routed through this uh, hole here in the uh, fender well. It exits here, then you see here I have my conduit, my wire going across the firewall there. I haven't clipped off the excess uh, zip ties yet, but I just wanted you guys to see roughly what I've done. So that comes all along the firewall, all the way over here to my windshield wiper motor and then down under the uh, brake lines and over and tucked under and between the fuse box and the uh, reservoir here for our power steering fluid. And in here is where the uh, fuse will go. I've opted to leave the fuse out for right now. Um, again, what I'm doing is using this to supply power to the uh, seven way uh, connector back there. I'm only gonna be using six of those connections. Two of them I won't be using. That's the signal wire for the uh, brake controller. If you had a physical brake controller, I won't need that because I'm not using a physical one. I'm using a Bluetooth driven one. And then uh, secondly, the reverse uh, wire. I'm um, not going to be using that either because my trailer doesn't have reverse lights. What we've done is gone ahead and put our um, wire connection in the middle of the uh, clasp here. So when we tighten things up, it essentially clasps things in place. Okay, guys, so we're back. Just about finished. I got to put this uh, plastic kick panel back in here. But, um... Got our wheel back on, lux torque to spec. Obviously our splash guard is back in place. Again, you see our conduit coming up here. Comes up under, over along our firewall, right here, and then right there. And we have our 30 amp fuse inserted. But uh, all in all, not a bad install. It's really quite easy. And so all of our various plastic trim is back in. Truck's kind of dirty. Well, not kind of. It really is. Look at all the treasure I found. All of that was in the fender. <laughs> so I have to clean that up here in a minute. And all our trim back in. Things back in there, and then here in the back, everything's back in its proper place. I have my tunnel cover, I'm re added here, and a cargo net, all that fun jazz. Yeah, it's a fun little deal. I wouldn't want to do it again. Um, this is the final product. See, there's our flat four connector. Here's our bracket, here's our adapter, and here's some wires. Just got everything zip tied up in there. Now we're good to go. All right guys, so here's the wireless brake controller that I'm using. Again, it is a product that's made by Kurt. This is driven by their own personal application, which you can install on your personal Android 
or iOS device. And um, a fun fact about this particular controller, once you open it, inside of the uh, lid here, they like to stick the uh, Bluetooth code for this device. You wanna make sure you remove that. And the reason for this is because if you were to ever forget to remove this from the tow vehicle and someone stole it, it would be rendered useless because without the uh, pairing code, they wouldn't be able to utilize it. Um, it does also come with a little information card inside that also has the code written on it as well. But uh, it's one of those deals where once it's paired, you never have to enter the code again. But it's good to keep that card just in case. You never know. But um, once you have the uh, connection here made on your tow vehicle or your seven blade connector, once you have it plugged in there, under the uh, lid here is a status light. You can see it's now blinking. And that's because there is a constant 12 volts being supplied. And again, that's why you wanna unplug this when you're done mainly, and also to um, avoid theft. Because again, this thing is very expensive. I believe it retails for about 300 bucks. Um, ironically, <laughs> the um, person that sold me this device was a R51 owner. So he gave me the whole rundown and you know, we got to talking about our trucks and everything. Um, he didn't get to see mine because I drove my car for obvious reasons, but uh, his rig was pretty sweet. It was really nice. But um, yeah, once you get your flat four connection upgraded to the seven blade, you can use this device or any other uh, wireless brake controller, or you can go whole hog and get the actual uh, physical brake controller installed in your truck if you had the extra coin. Again, I did this as a um, way for me to save a few dollars because I had days before I needed to go and pick up our trailer. And um, sadly, at the time, I was actually uh, working on fixing the uh, flat four connector as it was filled with dirt and only to find out a few days later after going and checking out the trailer that, hey, I had some more work to do. So I rapidly came home. I ordered the... Um, adapter that you see here now on Amazon and then I went ahead and got the uh, wireless brake controller from our local and needless to say guys everything's been working great thanks again for stopping by the Camp of Dan files my name is Chris and please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe